just put those in the front of the Honda and we'll just take the Honda as far as we could up the road towards the culverts. While we're patiently trying to wait for our chip to come home, we've um, decided to go out hunting and hopefully killing some geese and birds. So hopefully when my husband finally gets home, we can actually have something fresh waiting for him. I'm Agnes Elstone. I was born and raised here in Narvik, Alaska. My Inupak name is Kalhapak. I'm married to my husband, Edward Chip Hailstone. We have two sons and five daughters. Chip is currently serving his jail time, and it's just the girls and I for now. Growing up here, being raised here, and living here all my life, I've went through every river, every slough. It's always a cycle, and it's always changing. The last 10 months have been pretty long and sad with Chip being gone. Food didn't taste good, coffee didn't taste good, but I got through it. I had my daughters with me. They've actually gone from walking behind me to walking by my side and hunting with me. It's been really awesome watching these girls in the last year grow up. He's coming home soon and we're looking forward to the day he steps off that plane. We survived. We've improved, and now we're just a lot stronger. I think if we put our beautiful minds together, we might catch dinner. Today we're heading about three miles out of Narvik to go do a bird hunt. Normally we're in Kiwalik this time of the year and we're doing our bird hunting down there, but this year we're in Narvik and we're doing our hunt around the area. Usually Chip and the boys go out and do the hunting, but this year it's me and the girls. With the seasons changing and the birds arriving, it's time to go catch a couple birds. This looks like a good spot. There's birds already. This is a good place. There's willows over there. We could go sit right over here along the water's edge. Once we get over there, we have to load our guns right away because there's already birds flying. So we're going to really try to go catch a fresh dinner for your guys' dad here when he gets home. Yep. Ready? Yep. This is where I used to go when I was a little kid. All you gotta do is stand some of them up. They don't have to be perfect. You just need a good spot to sit. So right now we're just setting up a blind. And in my language it's called Itchobik. And uh, it took uh, to sit there patiently and wait. Right on, girls, real good. We got this bind up in no time. Now we can just try to fill up our rifles and sit quietly. We need to load them up. We managed to make our itchong look right before the next flock comes right on. No matter what, once you load your gun, always watch which way it's pointing, okay? Never point at each other, ever. We already saw a flock when we first got here, so that's a good sign. The birds are going to be attracted to that open water over there. For now, we just have to sit and wait. Come on, geese. I'm definitely getting a little bit older. I don't have quite the energy that I had when I was 20 when I showed up here. The difference is I have a lot more skills, a lot more knowledge, and a lot more experience. What do you think, Bo? Bergy? Hey, Bergy. How's the old man doing? <laughs> he says, I'm not getting in that, bud. Yeah, I'm going to hang out at my house for a while. All right, you guys ready for chow? My name's Andy Bassett. I live here on the Yukon River in Calico Bluff. I canoed from Whitehorse down to Eagle, Alaska in 1980 and landed on the banks right here along the Yukon River and felt like this is the place I need to live. 
I started out as an explorer leaving Maryland and coming to Alaska to explore a different lifestyle, but then I became a settler. It's just been a slow accumulation of tools, equipment, and skills that have gotten me where I'm at now. One of the things that I struggled with for a long time was money. I kept thinking I had to have a job, I had to have money. I think the most important lesson for me to learn out here is that out here money doesn't mean a damn thing to you. Nature is both beautiful and ruthless all at the same time. But I love being able to live in a place where I can make the world the way I want to live. Whenever I'm gone from here, the moment I come back, I have the exact same feeling. And that is, ah, I'm home. What do you think of all this rain, huh? It means breakup. Clear skies to rain means breakup. It's coming. One of the things I have to do every minute of the day right now is to keep a really close eye on the Yukon River. The water is extremely low this year for breakup. I have never seen it this low for a breakup, so I really don't have any experience on what that might entail. When the river starts backing up and starts flooding, it happens extremely fast. You got to be ready for it because there's no time to react. After a long winter with everything frozen and locked up pretty tight, the uh, river moving again, kind of like the beginning of the new year for me. Let's go this way. But I just noticed the river's come up quite a bit, so I think I'm going to put a marker stick in and kind of keep a close eye on this river. I want to be ready for when this river breaks so that nothing bad happens to me or my dogs. I'm just putting in some stake into the river here and then marking a couple of marks on it so I can kind of try and keep track of how much the river's rising. It's really starting to move a lot in the last hour or so. It's starting to happen and I want to be ready for it. Looks like that tree up there might be a good one to tie to. What I'm trying to do right now is uh, get a line on my fish wheel. Submit it for uh, floods and it starts floating. If it doesn't go down to Circle Alaska on the Yukon River and I have to start from scratch, I've got a lot of money invested in this fish wheel. If I lose this, it's a huge, huge loss. Alright. That fish wheel is represents probably one of the most important tools that I have for feeding myself and my dogs. I don't want to have to lose that fish wheel, and I certainly don't want to have to rebuild one from scratch if it goes away. Alright, I feel pretty secure about that now. I want to be ready for that river when it goes out, because uh, it could come and bite my butt really quick. to Alaska to live like. The land is my teacher. I'm out here to learn. Springtime is a good time to be out hunting and camping out in the woods. Muskrat season. Ice is just starting to free up on the lakes and ponds and creeks. It's not quite time to get out on the river with my boat yet, but I, I got a canoe now and a uh, Working on getting back to my roots that brought me up here in Alaska in the first place. I'm Jesse Holmes. I'm from Alabama originally. Before I moved to Alaska, I ran into some hard patches in life and didn't really have much direction. I got in some trouble. I went back to what I really liked doing naturally, and that was living out in the woods. I got a backpack, and all my possessions were on my back, and I was on the road. I was traveling, jumping trains going from one place to the next. I moved to Alaska determined to live a subsistence lifestyle and I found solace in the wilderness. And as I continued to work with sled dogs, I realized that I had a knack for it. I just put all my drive and determination into being successful at running dogs. That led to racing. And once I started racing, I knew I had something there. Every year, I try to better my life. 
always thinking about the dogs, trying to improve their life as well. We're a family. This trip's all about focusing on getting some muskrats for eating and fur and learning some new resources, expanding my hunting grounds. Muskrat are really good meat, they're highly nutritious, but it also has fur that I can use to make things out of. I plan on using it to later make some little things that I can tie onto the bottom of the harness to protect the planks from the extreme cold. I have no idea what I'm gonna encounter out here. I've never been down Fish Creek. When you put yourself out on a creek like this, it gets narrow, it gets fast, something can happen. Gotta make sure I don't tip this canoe. There's all kinds of little things right in here, like this. Hit that wrong, going too fast, tip the canoe right away. When you get in these tight little creeks, they just funnel down, got the same current, go right straight into everything. Hopefully I get enough power or not, good stop. Cut right through there. It's hard to say what I'm gonna run into out here, but that's exciting to me. I'm all about expanding my territory, exploring new places, and seeing the resources that are out there and how I can better use them to add to my life that I'm living out here. It's getting swift, it's getting narrow. Current's really starting to pick up. We hit where two forks combined. Now it's going to start getting fun. There's freedom out here in nature that you can't have in modern society. It's springtime. All the snow's melted now down the valley and the ice is starting to go out on all the little lakes and on all the creeks. The ducks are coming back. They're coming back into this open water. I haven't seen ducks since last fall, so I'm just I'm trying to get my first meal of duck this year. So where I find open water, there's a good chance of finding ducks. My name is Glenn Villeneuve. I live up in the Brooks Range, northern Alaska. 18 years ago, I came to the Brooks Range and I found my world right here. There's a lot of hard work out here. If I need to go get firewood, I go get it. If I need to get water, I go get it. If I need to look for food, I go look for it. I don't think of myself as very competitive against other people, but I like to compete with myself. I like challenges. I like to keep life interesting. I like to test myself. Out here, I've got a lot of opportunity to do that. It's comfortable to be in one area and to know it well, but I want to go beyond that now. I want to explore. I want to look around. I want to go places I've never been. I'm never going to get to know all this country, but I'm going to have a lot of fun exploring what I can. There's a little pond right over here. Could be some ducks on it. I've got to be real sneaky because ducks have very good eyes. The trick is to see the ducks before they see me. Ducks are right at the bottom of the food chain. They're getting hunted by the falcons. They're getting hunted by the hawks, the foxes. And they're getting hunted by me. Some ducks. But they're too far away to shoot. And there's no more cover for me to hide behind. I gotta try and get closer, but the ducks are gonna see me. I don't know how this is gonna work out. If there's nothing to hide behind, a lot of times the ducks will just take off before you get close enough to get a shot.
I gotta be real sneaky here. I got two ducks. Hopefully the wind's gonna blow them right into shore here. I don't wanna go swimming if I don't have to. It's shallow water, but it's gonna be cold. Last thing I need is to get my feet all wet in here. Looks like a storm's coming in. I gotta get these ducks. It's getting windy, it's cold. Sometimes the hardest part's recovering if I don't wanna lose those ducks. Sometimes I get lost in the weeds here. I gotta grab that duck before it blows away. Two scops. Those are nice eating ducks. They're bay ducks. See, they dive down, but they eat a lot of vegetation. They're not a fish eating duck. So it tastes really good. It's gonna be duck for dinner tonight. Temperature's dropping. Wind's getting strong here. It looks like some rain's blowing in. I'm quite a ways from home, but I'm closer to a little wall tent I have set up over here. It's gonna come in real handy right now because it looks like a storm's blowing in. Wind's picking up, temperature's dropping, it's starting to rain. I'm gonna go over to the tent, get a fire going, get inside out of the weather and pluck my ducks. Cozy little camp. I can just wait out the storm right here, head home after it stops raining. Ducks are being hunted all the time. Humans don't take many ducks, but the foxes, the falcons, the hawks, the owls, they all hunt ducks. I prefer to shoot male ducks in the springtime because this time of year, they're mating and reproducing. And if you leave the females, they'll still have their little ducklings growing up and it'll be better for the duck population as a whole. There, got that duck all plucked. Got this one all plucked. Two nice ducks. Okay, hey, the rain stopped. That's nice. I can walk home now. I'll go home and cook up my ducks back at camp. What a great day duck hunting. This worked out great. Got a couple of ducks. Got to hang out in my nice little camp down here. Let the rain pass. Time to head back home. You have a home no matter where you are, so you can always go lay your head. and most of the birds are coming from that direction. It's kind of hard to figure out which way I want to watch. I really want the goose, so I'm just going to keep my eyes out here and just keep hunting, sit here. In Norvik, Agnes and her daughters are hunting birds as they migrate through the region. The window for this annual hunt is brief, but the needed harvest will provide the family with their first meal together in more than a year. The girls and I haven't seen Chip for about a year, so... We've decided to go out and go do a bird hunt and hopefully catch something for dinner for when Chip gets home. Living this style, you have to go out and get your own food. You can't just go to any store with the money that you don't have. It's just a waiting game.
six ones just flew over. Oh, they're not coming back. Gotta keep your eyes open. They didn't even make a sound and they almost flew over us. Oh, so funny, there's a whole bunch of swans just came flew right over. I took a shot, all right, but uh, a little far. Could have had that one, but I wasn't prepared. But this time, I'm going to be prepared. So it's about one o'clock right now and the girls are already sleeping and the birds not flying. The sun has gone down. It'll get bright about like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. So we're just gonna sit out here and just call it a night. Let these girls sleep till in the morning. Bright and early, they're gonna definitely wake up when the birds start flying. They're at home out here, so that makes me more comfortable. Especially when we're trying to get to dinner. Then we'll have a story. <laughs> Here. The sun is just finally starting to come out and I can hear the birds and hopefully I'll catch a goose soon. They're starting to fly. Do you see them? to catch dinner for my husband. He, was, he should be here on the next flight. And I now just got us dinner. I'm so happy for myself. It took us hours and hours of being out here. But this is what I came for. I got a goose, girls. Now we just got to go prepare it. He should be here soon. So we should get ready. I'm sure your dad will be happy to see us, but I'm sure he'll be happy to have a goose also for dinner. It's been a fun hunt. I'm glad you girls stuck it out with me out here overnight. Yeah, but it was fun. Yeah. I'll carry my guns and this goose. You girls about ready? Yep. We did it, girls. We are awesome. We're going to have the most perfect meal with your girl's dad. With Chip being gone, it's real difficult, but uh, we've set our minds to it that we can take care of each other, take care of ourselves, and it will eventually pass. So it's almost passed, and he's almost here. We got our goose. Pretty soon you girls are gonna have your dad. It's a good day. Let's go show off our first goose. <laughs> Glad you girls are hunters too. Every failure is a success because it teaches you how not to do it, and it teaches you how to do it better in the future. chance to secure materials around camp or months of planning and hard labor will be washed away last year i built a yurt here and i had to haul down 45 to 50 thousand pounds of building materials to this site so i built a corduroy road oh man that's a heavy one i just cut down a bunch of trees strip the branches off lay them down and that becomes what's called a corduroy road me to then drive my tractor my bulldozer on it's a lot of work to build a corduroy road it takes hours and hours days and days to cut enough trees and lay them down into this spot and i don't want 
want the ice to take all this work away from me. I don't want to lose my matting, so we'll see if my tractor will come up through this soft material and hopefully I can save all these logs. Hey, what are you guys doing up there? Come on, get off the ice. Come on, Jack. You need to go down the river with that. to having heavy equipment here in a remote place out in the bush is when you get really stuck you don't have many resources to work with to get yourself out so you got to be really careful and think about not getting stuck for building that road last year was so that I could come up here and build this thing here. The danger is if the ice comes up this far, then if the ice starts pushing on this, then it's a big loss. And this was a huge investment in time and effort and labor and money and a real investment into my future here and I can't afford to have it go away. Wishing doesn't save my property and all my equipment and everything else. The only thing I can do is prepare the best I can for it and wish and hope that nothing bad happens. Just because you have the skills and the materials to survive doesn't mean you're gonna survive. I'm looking for somewhere to hunt. Hunting's all about timing, putting yourself in the right position. Jesse is scouring a nearby creek to hunt for muskrats. A harvest that will provide him with food for himself and further will protect his dogs from frostbite. But this time of year, he must avoid the deadly obstacles of the still freezing waters at all costs. There's a lot of things in the water, obstructions to navigate. I gotta make sure that I navigate them correctly. And if I'm not careful, I could flip the canoe. And if you flip the canoe, you're gonna lose most of your equipment and gear and you could possibly lose your life. It's really cold in this water. It's all coming from the melt of the snow and the ice. It's looking pretty jammed up up here. I'm gonna go over here to the right, pull the canoe out, take a look, see what I'm working with. I'm just gonna have to pull out here and push back in here. Just the kind of things you're gonna run into canoeing down these small creeks. But I figure if I keep heading down, I'm bound to run into some good territory for hunting this evening. Oh, I got a bunch of sweepers right in the way here. I'm trying to cut through here on this left side. You gotta just push your way through. Gotta be stubborn. Jam your way right through there. Grab a paddle on anything you can. Oh, there's a big old sweeper. Pull out over the side and look at this bad boy. Don't look like there's any way through this one. There's this big tree. I'm not gonna be able to get around that. Over this. I don't like certainty. I don't like structure. What's life without a little adventure, a little down windfall in the way? There have been a lot of things in the way for me my whole life. Can't end up losing my canoe. Once it's under the water, I'm not gonna be able to pull it out myself. adventure beautiful night full moon out it's getting cold just gonna keep drifting around in here wait for my opportunity to present itself the creek's finally starting to open up again less current less snags in the way it was kind of a battle to get through there 
It's coming on dust. This is when the muskrat really start getting active. Missed him. Oh, I missed him. I may have heard come by. Got a little hasty. I know I couldn't really see real good right now. It's getting too dark. If you uh, don't hit them just right, they'll sink before you can get to them. It's definitely worth all the trouble to get here. I'm in the right area now. I'm seeing some muskrat. I'm just going to go get some sleep and get up early and keep hunting. Things didn't change, it'd just be static and dull and boring, but it's the changes, that's what keeps it exciting. I got ducks for dinner for the first time in many months. I haven't eaten moose meat all winter. Tonight I got ducks, that's something different. It gets you thinking, just living this way. Hunting for your food, just having this environment around you changing all the time. The weather's changing, the animals are changing, new animals are coming around. When I set off in the morning to hunt these ducks, the lake was mostly all covered in ice. And now it's breaking up right here in front of me. This is an environment of extremes where there's a lot of change. It goes from 60 below zero in the winter to 85 above in the summer. And the time in between, the spring and the fall, that's the most interesting because that's when you get that dramatic change and it happens fast. Oh, they're looking good. Time to eat some ducks. Hmm. First duck of the year. There's nothing like it. You can't buy this kind of food. This is special. Mmm. It's good. Taste is totally unique. And when you haven't had a duck for months, they're extra special. The very first ducks of the year. When you hunt something, it does taste better. This summer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take advantage of the snow-free conditions, the warmer temperatures, the 24-hour daylight, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna explore. There have been times when I've gone for an entire year without traveling more than five or six miles from this camp right here. But this summer, I'm gonna go out and explore. I'm gonna cover some country. I wanna go further than I've ever been before. Places where I've never set foot on the ground. This summer, I'm gonna go there. I don't think that the way I live is any better than any other way of living. It's just right for me. Good boy. Come on, buddy. Let's go see the ice. Come on, Chief. One of the things that I really love about dog mushing is you get a really tight bond with those dogs, but one of the downfalls of that is when you see them start to go downhill as they get older. Gee, that a boy. Iceberg had a stroke not too long ago. He's a one-eyed dog as it is, and now he's a zero-eyed dog because the one good eye went blind after the stroke. Gee, a little. Come on. That a boy. Good boy. Come on. Gee. Gee, gee. Come on. Straight He's making the best of the life that he's got, and uh, I'm trying to work with him by giving him commands to allow him to have a good retirement around here. All right, I'm putting in a second marker now because my first one washed away. Yeah, just give me something else, and then this is my own marker. When that goes away, it's the whole river's going out. Right there. With breakup of the Yukon River underway, Andy must continually set markers along the riverbanks. Tracking the water levels is the only way to save his camp, his sled dogs, and his life from the wrath of the river. Yeah, 
river's beginning to break up. This is like New Year's for me. It's a very symbolic time for me along the Yukon River. It can mean uh, the beginning of a new season. The water is really, really low for a breakup, and I've never seen it this low for a breakup, so I really don't know what's going to happen with this breakup. I'm a little bit nervous about that. Hundreds of millions of tons of ice go by my place, hopefully very, very peacefully. over there buddy right on the edge let's come away from that edge of the river there there you go this is by far the highest the water's been so far what do you think bud i think this is it buddy having a hard time navigating and the poor guy just walked right over a 10-foot cut bank headlong right into the silt and sand does that feel pretty good huh that was one heck of a fall you took buddy <laughs> breakup sucks sometimes doesn't it huh he's really tuned into me and i'm really tuned into him and kind of a scary moment for both of us he's aptly named iceberg but that's not the way i want him to go out It's just about over, and that's why we're going to have kind of a celebratory fire down here by the river. The worst is coming. We've got quite a bit of ice packed into the beach here. The water's dropped way down. For the most part, this breakup's been way less stressful than most breakups have been in the last six years around here, so that's a good thing. That's a good boy. Doesn't take much to keep him happy. Iceberg has always been kind of a special dog, one of my better leaders of all time, and we've always had a really close relationship, and so it's kind of tough for me to see him in his waning time of his life. Iceberg and I have gone a lot of places together, done a lot of things, had a lot of triumphs and some pretty dismal failures, but we did it together. I'm thankful for the time that I have with him, and I think he's been pretty thankful to have the life that he has here. Every day of his life, he did what he could to make me happy. That's what dogs do. Their only goal in life is to make their owners happy. It's a feeling that you don't get from just about anything else in life. Now that the Yukon River is broken up, I'm looking forward to a busy summer. It's been a good winter, and I'm looking forward to another incredible year living along the Yukon River the way I want to live in the place I want to live. Who could ask for more than that? For me, none of this came easy, so it means all the more to me to have to earn it and work hard to get it. I don't know, I'm looking for a nice spot to set up. I'm gonna try to head out of the canoe. Last night I took a shot at a muskrat. It was pretty dark, so I had to call it a night. 
find myself a little spot here, and I'm gonna post up and I'm gonna try hunting out of the community. This looks like a real nice spot. There's three different bodies of water coming together here from the lakes. It's like a nice dry spot to sit. Now it's just a patience thing. First fresh muskrat of the spring. This is great. This is gonna get eaten tonight at camp. To me, to get some fresh meat, that's what I come out here for, so I'm really happy about that. And preserve the fur, preserve the meat, and that'll make a delicious meal tonight. This is a nice recuperation from a long, hard winter, training and living on the trail. There ain't too much complicated about right now. And that's nice, that's a place where you can unwind and breathe and hear the sounds of nature. Sitting there about to dig into my muskrat, and I got another muskrat. I got dinner, and I got two furs that I can use for making things for my dogs. Nice and tender, tears right off the bone, perfectly cooked. Why I moved on to the river. Not just to be a dog racer or a dog musher, just to live a full, wholly embodied lifestyle that revolves around each other. There's no place I'd rather be right now than sitting here. I'm a lucky man. Whatever season it is, we're going to be out here because we love to be out in the country and out in the wild. It's been almost a year since your guys' dad's been home. I know, it's his dad. Yay, it's going to be so much better with him back here. The plane is coming. The plane is coming. Dad's on that plane. Can't wait to bring him home so we can actually enjoy each other. We have dinner waiting for him. This is it. It's gonna land. <laughs> Yay! We've been waiting quite some time for Chip to get home, so um, this is a really exciting day. He's finally here. There he is. I see him. In there, oh my god, for reals. I'm so Hello. glad you put it up. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Last 10 months has been pretty, but um, today I don't think my smile is gonna go away. Yeah, good to see you, Dad. It's been a while. Miss you. Yeah, I missed you too. The are looking good, looking taller. I'm Edward Hailstone. My friends call me Chip. I just got a present. I got that time behind me, and the quicker I can get to that, the better off I'll be. Happy to be around my kids, my wife. My kids miss me a lot. My wife missed me a lot. They had themselves a pretty tough time. They dealt with what had to be done with. So I think this summer ought to be kind of fun. I want to show my kids different channels and where it is that we go. And uh, I also want them to be able to have a place to fall back on, which is this area around them. So that's what's important to me with my kids, is teaching them how to take care of themselves. Then they'll take care of their kids. Family's like a team. So if you got a good family up and everybody's playing their part, then you'll have a good team. We've been all waiting for this day. It's dinner time. We went and caught this and we have some goose soup for dinner. Waited for you to come home and I'm so glad you made it. It's good to be home. Thanks for the hunting. It's a good way to go. This is a good kid to catch. Yeah, this is a great kitchen. Thanks for the goose. Tastes really good. I'm just uh, 
whole thing. That's an ordeal behind me. But yeah, we got a lot of stuff ahead of us. We talked it out and we did everything we needed to do and we survived the winter. And uh, now that it's spring and my husband is back, I'm looking forward to this great thought with my whole family. We're all good dinner. It's good to have a good dinner with you. Thank you. I should be too. It tastes better with you around. <laughs> <cười> Chào các bạn nha Đây là cây cổ phụ trong vườn Nhà mình Cây này là cây Rất ừ, là to các bạn ạ Cây lục vườn các bạn ạ Tán rất là to Đấy, Ông trong trong cái bãi nước cây này rất là lâu rồi các bạn ạ rất nhiều người hỏi mua nhưng không bán đây là gốc của nó đấy ạ đấy, rất là nhiều thân bao nhiêu người hỏi mua nhưng ông không bán ạ cây lục vùng các bạn nhá đến mùa nó ra hoa nó ra bốn cái con rất là đẹp 